I'm very happy to host this webinar and I have the honor to have a special speaker, Kevin L. Jackson. Kevin is a business executive specializing in cloud solution, he is now ranked in the top 100 cloud experts worldwide and working in several cloud organizations and he has been responsible for many successful initiatives such as the Cloud Veteran 360, Cloud Tech University and Gov Cloud Network. For uh, who doesn't know the Cloud Credential Council, the CCC is an independent and vendor neutral organization with membership that include user organizations, vendor, professional association and international certification bodies. The CCC has developed a professional certification program for cloud on top of the Cloud Essential certification that has been the first. Then, organizations like Microsoft, IBM, HP, Dell and more have participated in designing and developing a professional program. In general, we can say that the CCC is a global, internationally recognized non-for-profit organization with, mo with more than 100 members and several thousand certified individuals across the globe, especially in Cloud Essential and Virtualization Essential, that has been the first two certification provided by the CCC. Here, a little timeline to let you understand the story of the CCC that started in 2010 when ING decided to consolidate data centers and adopt cloud and then they realized that they need some training for their employee. So using that uh, basic reason, the CCC has been created and then we've collected a lot of experts from VMware, Cisco, IBM, etc. And they created the first syllabus and then Cloud Essential, then Virtualization Essential. And then in the course of the years, Cloud Technology Associate has been developed that kind of uh, took over. And then other members like Deloitte and Microsoft and Capgemini joined the CCC. And then with more development, we arrived at a full portfolio of professional certification. So with input with all these leading associations and organizations and then other very important members like Citrix, for example, now the CCC has a complete portfolio of certification that include also a, a FedRAM certification, big data certification. And for the next year, at the beginning of next year, we will see the coming of Cloud Business Associate that is dedicated for a, a business managers or in general executives that need to understand as quickly as possible how to handle cloud computing. So this is a certification scheme from the CCC. So you can see that we have a basic of associate level that covers all the basic knowledge that you need to then go in the most specific and professional area like administrator, development, security, service manager, and architecture. Okay, how the CCC works? The CCC is an organization that works with partner and we have a um, a lot of uh, document required to participate in creating the courses and delivering the courses. So it's important to understand that everything that goes around the CCC is accredited. So the training partner has to be accredited, the lesson has to be provided by uh, trainers that have been accredited and pass several exams with a high grades and all the courseware has to be accredited. Recently, for the one of you that are interested in them becoming a training partner of the CCC, the CCC has introduced the affiliate program that allows to uh, have other uh, training organization using the training partner affiliation and accreditation from a, like a head. So in this way, you have a very low barrier to enter and start to become a CCC delivering partner. So let's move to the topic of today, that is hybrid cloud. The, um, we decided to start to talk about hybrid cloud this month because we understand talking uh, extensively with Kevin that hybrid cloud is one of the most important topic in the market today and that the CCC certification scheme cover basically all the key role that are very important for the hybrid cloud technology. So we have database professionals that are uh, linked to our big data foundation certification, the information security manager with security and so on. We uh, public publicized recently an infographic where we explain how to link all the key role to our uh, knowledge, uh, let's say. But I will say that the Kevin is definitely the right person to talk about it. So I will give now the microphone to Kevin Jackson.
So, uh, my name is uh, Kevin Jackson. I've been working in uh, cloud computing for quite a bit. Back in, I originally was in the U.S. military uh, working on the predecessor of the Internet. Um, after that, I started developing um, websites, worked with IBM uh, in deploying e-business solutions, and then transitioned into building and deploying clouds uh, in the U.S. government and other commercial organizations. Um, I started my relationship with the Cloud Credential Council um, also quite a while ago um, and have earned the Professional Cloud Solution Architect certification and was actually the author of the Executive FedRAMP uh, credential. The Cloud Certification Council um, and the certifications that I've received have been uh, very helpful to me in my uh, professional growth and professional career. Now as, as cloud computing is becoming the mainstream of information technology, not just a way of doing information technology, but the way of doing IT, there is a uh, huge focus on how enterprises and organizations can transition from their traditional IT platform and models to a new operating model that not only leverages the investments that they have made in existing IT, but can also consume cloud-based solutions, both private cloud and public cloud. And this is the new era that we're entering, um, ultimately referred to as hybrid cloud or hybrid IT. So why hybrid cloud? Because hybrid cloud gives enterprises the flexibility to place their business workloads where they most make sense. There are advantages to the traditional data center model, but some of the disadvantages include the need for long-term capital investment. Cloud actually gives you more flexibility for IT. Hybrid cloud gives you technical control because one of the downsides of cloud is multi-tenancy. The fact that you're actually sharing the resource with others. With a hybrid cloud, you get to define when you use multi-tenancy. Security. One of the strongest aspects of traditional IT is you have complete control of the security that's implemented across your infrastructure. You can choose dedicated servers and network devices and isolate them and restrict access as necessary. Although cloud providers are very, very good at implementing security, that is still another organization doing your, doing your security. And there are some cases where that's just not uh, possible. Compliance. Regulatory agencies and organizations are still coming to grips with the use of cloud. And many times, auditors will not accept cloud solutions as meeting compliance needs and requirements. 
financial management. With a hybrid cloud or hybrid IT environment, the organization can own the base configuration and rent solutions to meet any type of spikes, any type of seasonal uh, variation, or if you get large requests for your services. So you have more flexibility. A hybrid cloud also gives you technical predictability. You use dedicated servers and you know and you decide when they're updated or when they're patched. So your baseline performance is steady and predictable. But you still have the option with a hybrid cloud to supplement it with multi-tenant cloud service if necessary. Operating system choice. Innovation is important to any business. So with a hybrid cloud, a hybrid environment, you can leverage public clouds for test and evaluation or for providing technical customers an option to choose their preferred environment. Innovation is also easier in a hybrid environment. You can spin up or tear down cloud service quickly and easily. So for all these reasons, a hybrid environment where you have your private cloud, your traditional data center, and a public cloud environment gives you the value, the economic value of public cloud along with the security and technical control of private clouds and traditional IT infrastructures. But as you can see, this de demands a broad range of skill sets and capabilities across your staff. So a hybrid cloud represents a huge challenge to every enterprise. Transitioning to cloud is more just than just deciding whether to go to Amazon or Azure or one of the other major cloud service providers. The enterprise needs to understand how to transition to a new operating model. This operating model contains new ways of managing funds, financial management is directly linked to the business models of the organization. The IT staff also needs to have cloud service brokerage skills. They need to be able to identify and evaluate the services that are being made available from multiple cloud service providers. They also need to be able to baseline those services and decide which cloud service provider or which cloud option best fits the business models and business goals. A hybrid cloud also brings with it a need for a federated security model federated identity and access management across multiple IT resources. And automation. Automation is what drives cloud solutions. And with a high degree of automation, you get a enhanced visibility across your infrastructure. But this enhanced visibility 
also comes with metering and monitoring, which supports financial management and drives more immediate decision-making processes across the enterprise. By using benchmarking, you can set the enterprise up for a very dynamic environment, which also enables agility to your business model. The lower cost of cloud and the agility of cloud typically pushes decisions down to a lower management level. And all of these changes drives, can drive significant changes to enterprise IT governance. The agility, flexibility, enhanced business models all challenge your traditional enterprise. So how do you get these skill sets, these much needed skill sets for managing and adopting hybrid cloud? One of the major transitions in hybrid cloud is going from an infrastructure centric security model to a data centric security model. Why? Because you don't know where your data is going in a hybrid environment. So you have to focus on protecting the data. You also may be transitioning from the traditional relational database to the more modern NoSQL or parallel processing databases like MapReduce. Central to all of this is understanding your data and classifying your data based upon the user set and the business use. Your database professional needs to lead your organization in categorizing all of your data. Your data can go anywhere in the world, so it's important to understand what protection levels need to be placed on your data based upon where it is and what device is accessing it. Role-based access is also critical when operating in a cloud environment. Encryption at rest, in motion, and in use so-called homomorphic encryption must be selected based upon the category of data, the location of the data, and the user, the role of the user that's accessing that data. And the Internet of Things is making this even more complex. Devices are changing every day, and your database professional needs to understand how that may affect your business and business model. So within your organization, you need professional training on managing the life cycle of your data. and leveraging things like big data analytics, social media data, and going from the serial, serial processes of traditional relational databases to parallel processing under Hadoop, Mongo, 
and MapReduce can really enhance your ability to deliver value to your customers. All of these capabilities need to be led by a professional trained database professional. So in transitioning to this data-centric world, what did that mean for software development? Well, you are now in a world of hardware dependence, independence, where the developer doesn't really know where their application is going to be running. The only thing they know for sure is that it's going to be in a shared services environment. So the techniques for designing and developing and deploying secure applications in a cloud environment are different. Software developers need to understand that the cloud infrastructure is designed for failure. So the applications need to be designed for failure as well. So is this a bad thing? No, it's a great thing. Because designing for failure means that you, no matter what happens in the infrastructure environment, your application will continue to run. You'll get higher usability, uh, more flexibility, and happier customers. Your application may also need be able to discover IET services on the fly. A high degree of automation in your applications. And the use of standard standardization and platform as a service in order to enhance the quality of your software. This also reduces the cost of developing, deploying, and maintaining your applications. And the new holy grail of software application programming interfaces. APIs provide the flexibility and agility needed in today's business world. Interoperability is key and today's software developer needs to recognize that when you're operating across a hybrid environment. And who hasn't heard of DevOps or continuous development? Microservices and containers like Docker and LXC. All of these skill sets are needed by the modern software developer. and security. We've already talked about how your organization needs to transition from an infrastructure centric security model to a data centric security model. So your security professionals must be able to understand and support your database professionals and software developers in this new environment. evaluating the use of data and application across different roles, different business processes, different locations, and yes, different devices is the purview of your security professional. They must also understand all the concepts and evaluate 
Feder federated identity and access management providers. The use of identity brokers across your cloud ecosystem. And the use of a security management partner external to your organization. And since you're in an environment that's constantly changing, constantly updating, the concept of continuous monitoring to ensure that your environment remains safe and protected is the responsibility of your security professionals. In the cloud world, you are inherently working in a global environment. So personally identifiable information, management of that, the management of healthcare data and information can be the difference between remaining in business and going to prison. Your security professional will keep you out of jail. It will also ensure that you meet any regulatory, regional, or country requirements with respect to managing and running your business. Rules and regulations about data change every day and different jurisdictions have different laws. Wouldn't you want a professionally trained security professional in your organization? Overseeing all of this is your cloud architect. Delivering solutions in a hybrid cloud environment is different than your traditional enterprise environment. Cloud architects work in a dynamic marketplace. Cloud service providers change their offerings constantly. An example of which is Amazon Web Services. Last year, they made over 700 changes and updates to the services that they deliver around the world. How can someone keep up with such a rate of change across multiple cloud service providers? That's the job of your cloud architect. They're not only responsible for understanding and managing your existing cloud service provider, but they need to maintain a pulse on the marketplace so that the enterprise maintains a viable path to alternate cloud service providers. Interoperability and portability is paramount when operating in a dynamic world. The cloud architect will manage your cloud service provider ecosystem. They may also be managing any regional CSPs to meet legal, regulatory, or data management laws and regulations. Your cloud architect will lead the team in selecting the appropriate services that will best meet your business and mission goals. The architect will also be responsible for benchmarking these services to ensure that you're always ahead of your competitors. Technical collaboration is important in this world because technology advances quickly. And if you're behind in your technology, 
if you're not collaborating with your cloud service providers, then you will fall behind. The cloud architect ensures that interoperability, portability, and regulatory requirements are always met. As I said before, you are operating in a global environment, so laws change. And business continuity is paramount. Just today, a typhoon hit the Philippines unexpectedly. If you operated in the, in the Philippines, which regional cloud service provider could you transition to in order to maintain your business? So your cloud architect is key to maintaining business continuity and disaster recovery when operating across a hybrid cloud. All of these roles are critical to supporting an agile business model. Your business analysts will keep an eye on your operational expenditures versus your capital expenditures. Your business analyst understands how your IT costs are tightly coupled to your IT usage. This is needed in order to maximize the margin that you expect to receive across your businesses. An agile world requires dynamic products and services. Many industries today are transitioning from the delivery of things to the delivery and management of information. Products and services today are composed of bits of information and bits of data. Your business analysts will be in a position to recommend the new products and services that are needed to make sure that your customer remains happy. If you're in a hybrid cloud, you also have hybrid IT sourcing. And dynamic sourcing of the information technology services is critical to maintaining your business margin. Your business analyst gives you the information needed to stay ahead of the pack. In the cloud world, the product development cycle can be measured in hours. The business analyst can drive that cycle and ensure that your company stays ahead. And what about social media? Are you listening to your customers? They're talking to you through Twitter, through Facebook, through LinkedIn, through Instagram. Are you collecting that data? Are you analyzing that data? Are you using that data to drive your product development cycle? If you expect to do that, you need a professionally trained business analyst. So professional certification is needed. It's critical if you are to be successful in the hybrid cloud world. This professional certification needs to be vendor neutral. Technology changes constantly. 
and vendors are in competition, not just to give you the best product, but to lock you in to their solution. They want your wallet share for a long time. So your team, your staff, needs to understand not only the technology and the differences, but they have to maintain viable options for transitioning to other vendors if necessary. They all need to understand how these options translate into real world solutions. One of the advantages that the Cloud Credential Council provides in their training is that it was designed and developed by vendors that are operating in the real world. Companies like Cisco, IBM, and users like ING have vetted the training that's provided by the Cloud Credential Council. So everything that they deliver, it's not from a textbook. These are driven by real world experiences. CCC certifications are accessible worldwide. Training and testing online. The certification has helped me become successful in cloud. Don't you want your team to have the skills and capabilities needed to be successful in this world? If so, I urge you to consider getting them certified. This also gives them a path for future growth. Certification makes you viable not only today, but for the future. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. And I'll stand by for any questions that you may have. Okay, so is there some tools that convert the feedback through the social media into results classified based on predefined criteria? So this is a question about social media monitoring. Yes, absolutely. A great question. There are, there are multiple tools in the marketplace specifically designed for collecting and reporting through multiple social media channels. Tools like Buffer and Sumall. Uh, in fact, in uh, my business, we monitor and uh, create reports and develop strategies for many of our customers by analyzing, by collecting and analyzing data through these channels. I could provide additional information. My contact information is on the screen. In a typical hybrid cloud spike scenario, how do you address the security challenge of data, especially sensitive data, being moved? Wait a second being moved to the public cloud integration challenge with the server providers API and system that synchronization challenge after data has been processed and is brought back to the private cloud? Yes, great, great question. So um, one of the most underutilized and understood roles across cloud computing is that of a cloud service broker. Many uh, take a cloud service broker um, and that role as akin to a financial management broker or stock broker or real estate broker. Those professionals are primarily focused on identifying what's available 
and negotiating cost and helping you with a single financial transaction. A cloud service broker is completely different. They not only help you with the financial transaction, but they have an ongoing operational role because cloud computing is an operational process. They do things like help you identify alternative cloud service providers, help you develop processes for transferring data from the enterprise to and from the enterprise in a cloud service provider or between cloud service provider. They can also serve as an identity broker or a security broker across multiple cloud service providers. One of the tools that a cloud service broker can use is a cloud solution computer aided design. Traditionally, people design infrastructures using static tools like Visio or Excel spreadsheets and even PowerPoints. There is a there is a brand new class of cloud solution tools coming to market. One that comes to mind is by Burstorm. And what it does, it's connected live to multiple cloud service providers. And you can use this interactive tool to monitor cloud service providers and design standardized solutions for doing things like transferring data from one to another. The tool itself is delivered via the cloud in a software as a service model and it's connected, the Burstorm tool for instance, is connected live to over 800 cloud service providers and it gives you real-time access to thousands of cloud services. In that way, you can make operational decisions in near real-time with real data. Um, if you're interested in more information about tools like Burstorm, please contact me. What's your opinion about vendors technical vendors joining the Cloud Credential Council. Why do you think they should do that? Yes. So, first of all, cloud computing is a young industry uh, and it's growing fast. If you uh, believe many of the analysts in the marketplace, they say that Amazon is, is way ahead of many other cloud service providers in delivering different cloud-based solutions. They're also maybe ahead with respect to the speed that they innovate. So from Amazon's point of view, why should they really help in uh, helping their competitors to catch up? Well, I believe that this is a, a short term. Um, this is this this is a sh short term environment, in that other cloud service providers like IBM, uh, Microsoft, HP, Dell, they are rapidly catching up to Amazon. So. In less than, I would say, six months, Amazon will no longer be the default answer. So it will be up to the enterprises to evaluate smartly between the cloud service providers. And Amazon, as a, as a smart provider, will then, I believe, 
quickly understand the importance and appreciate the importance of vendor neutral training and join CCC. Okay, thank you, Kevin, very much. And I, we don't have any more questions. So thank you everyone for your time and attention. We will follow up with the slides and recording from this webinar via email. We are currently confirming the next webinar for January and you will from the CCC uh, soon because we have important announcement about exams, about new certification coming up. So please uh, help us improve this webinar, uh, answering the survey that it will appear at the end. And thank everybody for the participating. Thank you.